I was going to ask you about the social policy uh, cooperation that's included in the document. Um, it talks about uh, Bermuda take advantage of the rehabilitation programs there are in the UK and transferring prisoners. I mean, how would that work in relation to prisoners? Is it the high-end prisoners, people serving life sentences that would be transferred? And in terms of the rehabilitation programs that are on offer, is that a, a bringing in a small unit of people who with experience and expertise in that area coming to Bermuda? I mean, how do you envisage that work? Well, one thing is that we put it there as an issue and a talking point for consideration. Bear in mind that these are a, a, a submission, and a submission can be accepted or rejected. A few years ago, we raised this issue, and it wasn't, I wouldn't say roundly rejected, might be an overstatement, but it was it was said to be at such a price, prohibitive price, that it equated to, be, to being a no. What we saw and what I saw at that time, I was there in my capacity, not as AG, but as Minister of Finance to the then Premier, Premier Brown, and I spoke on the issue of, of the sort of uh, criminals who were seen as high, um, high level security or in terms of the level of, um, of, of the criminality, the seriousness of the offense that they had been convicted of. And I think it was at a time when you had not quite, um, you had some unrest, you had some, something that was going on maybe a few years ago in our, in our prisons. And I seem to recall the point made at that time was whether, and it was just probably at the onset of what we now see in terms of um, heightened gang activity, is that what were the options? And were there options for prisoners to be um, transferred and placed within the UK? At that time, um, it wasn't something that was looked upon favorably. I don't know that there has been a change of, of approach, but I think their attitudinal shift is that many of the overseas territories have talked about the fact that there seems to be heightened criminal activity occurring in their islands. You've also talked about, I think, uh, some have talked about having a central prison, but you know, and given the NIMBY syndrome, nobody, <laughs> no overseas territory is going to want that prison to be on, in, on their territory. And it's a question of what are the options from that point of view in terms of re, not so much re-domiciling, but resituating or relocating locating severe um, level in terms of crime prisoners abroad. It's more the idea of deterrent. And in terms of rehabilitative programs, it wasn't in terms of rehabilitative programs being brought here, but in terms of looking at the rehabilitative programs that are actually in situ in the UK. And copying those here. Hmm? And copying those here and learning from those rehabilitative programs that are in the UK. Well, copying them, not so much copying them, but more as being able to take advantage when prisoners are located, if they are located, if that was something which found favor, is there the opportunity for those programs to be, to be um, made available to prisoners who are relocated there? All along throughout the, the paper, you'll see that the opportunity of transfer of knowledge, transfer of information, both in terms of um, for training, both in terms of at the public sector level, but also even in terms of the private sector. So it's the idea of recognizing the wider resources and the 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 breadth of resources, and seeing whether we can we can piggyback on that.